Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now on question number four from this paper of January 2021. This question here is about this is M1, by the way, at Excel International A level, January 2021 paper, question number four. It says a metal girder AB has weight W newtons and length six meters. The girder rests in a horizontal position on two supports C and D, where AC and DB are both 1 meters, as shown in figure 2. When a force of magnitude 900 newton is applied vertically upwards to the girder at A, the girder is about to tilt is about to tilt about D. So when you put a force at A upwards, it's about to tilt about D, meaning it's going to about to lift off from this support. Like just imagine you lift it upwards from here. It's about to lift off the support. It's not going. It's not lifted off it yet. It's about to. It's just about to. So if you increase that force, it would lift off. So that 900 is just enough to cause it to be just about to lift off that support. Okay. When the force of magnitude of 1,500 newtons is applied vertically to the girder at B, the girder is about to tilt about C. So when you basically it seems like when you remove this force that was there and then you apply a force at b 1500 newtons upwards then it's about to tilt about c meaning it's about to lift off from d okay so they're giving you two different situations um and what they have to do is it says the girder is modeled as a non-uniform rod whose center of mass is a distance x meters from a find the value of x okay so we don't know the weight of the rod. We don't know the distance of the center of mass. We don't know where the center of mass is. Okay, those two things that we don't know. All right, and we also won't know one of the reaction forces here in each case. We'll know that one of them is zero if it's about to lift, if it's about to tilt, if it's about to um, tilt about D in the first instance. The reaction force at C would be zero, but the reaction force at D would be equal to the weight of the rod, okay, um, and or the result in between the, the weight of the rod and the force that's pulling it up. <clears throat> and we don't know the weight of the rod, so we won't know the reaction at D. So we've got, we got three unknown things, okay, we've got three things that we don't know in, in, in each case, okay, we have the reaction at one of the supports, we don't know. The weight of the rod we don't know, and the distance of the center of, of the mass, of the uh, of the center of the mass from the um, from air, you know we don't know where it is on the rod. So three things that we don't know. Okay. So how do we deal with these three unknowns? Well, this is like a typical type of question that you get in static in uh, moments. Typical moments question. It comes up very very often where they give you two separate situations, and you can form two equations and deal with the situation that way. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take them case by case. I'm going to take the first case where we have a force of 900 newtons vertically upwards at A, and it's about to tilt about D. And then I'll take the second case separately. So let's start with the first case. I've kind of drawn these separately here. So I'm going to, I'm going to talk, ta start with case A, case 1. Okay, so case 1. We have a force of 900 newtons acting at A. Let me just make that a bit more neat. Okay, at A there's a force of 900 newtons acting upwards. Now, this is a bit different because normally these this force is hanging here. Then now we've got forces acting upwards. So they're trying to be a bit different here to mix things up a bit. Um, and we've got the center of the mass of the beam is going to be somewhere, I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere closer to this side because you need a greater force on that side to make it tilt about C. So I'm, th I'm thinking the center of mass more on this side. But it doesn't really matter where you draw it. Between C and D, it's going to be somewhere between C and D. And it doesn't matter where you draw it, to be honest, because uh, your answer will come out in your... Um, so that's W Newtons, okay? Um, when you find the value of X, the answer will come. This is the reaction at C, and this is the reaction at D. Okay, the reaction at C, and the reaction force at D. 
So those are all the forces acting on this object. Now, when this is 900 newtons, it's about to, to turn about D, about to tilt about D, which means it's about to lift off the support at C. Okay, just imagine if you were to, to have a force pulling up. If you have a force big enough, it's eventually going to you know, lift off this support and it will turn around this support, okay, as, as I mentioned. So that means, in this case, the reaction at C is going to be zero. If it's about to lift off, the reaction at C at that point is going to be zero, and the reaction at D will take you know, the resultant of these two forces. Okay? So now we have a few things that we have to deal with. One of them is we have to find, our objective in this question is to find this length over here. Okay, is to find this length between A and the weight. That's what we have to find. That's X. What do we know in this situation? Um, okay, we know this, this is zero. So I've got rid of this force. So we've got three unknowns, W, X, and this reaction in C. Okay, now if, I mean, so I've got rid of this four unknowns, but now we know that this is zero now. Okay, so this is zero. Now, the reaction at D, I don't know it because it depends on what W is. Right? So I have three things I don't know, X, W, and, and the reaction at D. Now we know that if we take moments about a particular point, the force going through that point will have no turning effect. So if I take moments about D, if I take moments about D, then I will have eliminated this force. But then I have to find the distance okay, between um, D and these forces. That's what I need to find. I need to find the distance between D and these forces that are acting, and the forces are 900 newtons, and W, this reaction force is zero now. All right, so let me find the, the distance, but I want to find them in terms of X, okay, in terms of this distance X. And when I look at the second situation, okay, uh, where the force is going to act on this way, I have to have the distances that I'm going to measure there also in terms of the same X. Okay, as we've expressed in terms of X, because I'm going to end up with two equations. I have two things that I won't know, which will be W and X, and those two have to refer to the same quantities for me to be able to uh, be able to solve it simultaneously. So let me just now um, go ahead and deal with that. Let's now find the distance of W N from the the, the force uh, the the weight from from D. So I'm, I'm looking for this distance here. Okay. So this distance between the weight and D is going to be in terms of um, x, because that's that distance we don't know. Well, I know the distance between A and D. I know that distance is going to be, the distance all the way from here to here is going to be 6 minus 1, it's 5. Okay, so I know that this distance is 5 meters, so the distance I need is going to be 5 minus x. So this is 5 minus x in terms of x. Okay, and I also need to know the distance of the force, this 900 uh, newtons force from D, because I'm taking that as, a, as the point, point where I take the moments about. And so that distance from here to here is 6 minus 1, which is 5. Okay, so if I take moments about D, I know that it's in equilibrium. It's in limiting equilibrium. It's, it's, about, to, it's about to leave equilibrium. Um, the mo it's about to turn about D, but it's in equilibrium still. So the clockwise moments and the anticlockwise moments are still equal to each other. So the clockwise moments here would be 900 times 5. 900 times 5. And that will be equal to the anticlockwise moments, which would be from, from this force here, which is W times 5 minus X. So that leads us to the equation 4,500 equals W times 5 minus X. So that's one equation now I formed from this situation. I have two things I don't know. I have to find X in the, in the end. Now, if I look at um, another situation now, let me take the same thing here. And put it down here. This is now the second situation. Okay, I'm going to look at the second situation here where you have now the force is now applied at B, as it says. So when the force of magnitude 1500 newtons is applied vertically upwards to the girder at B, the girder is about to tilt about C. So this time, the force is being applied on this side. The force is being applied on this side. OK, 
Okay. So the force here now is 1500 newtons. Okay, so we've got the weight acting in the same place. It's the same weight, the same center of mass, it's the same girder. It's just a different situation now where the force is now being applied upwards at B instead of A. So this is still W newtons. You still have RD and RC. The situation changes a bit now. Okay, you have RC and RD, reaction at D. Now in this situation, what's happened now is it's about to be, it's going to be lifted up this way. So what's going to happen is it's about to lift off from D and it's turning about C. You can imagine if you lift this up, this is going to be raised off the, of the support. So basically the reaction at D is about to become zero. Once this becomes 1500, the reaction at D will be zero and all the reaction force will be on here. But we don't know what it is because we don't know W. We need to know what W is to find out what the reaction force is here. It will be the resultant of those two. Okay, so now what we need to do is um, we need to just take this new situation into account. And again, we have three things that we don't know. We don't know what X is. Okay, we don't know what X is, which is from there to there. Okay, I have to express everything in terms of the same X. Uh, we don't know what the reaction at C is. Okay, we don't know what that is. All right, and we don't know what W is. So again, if I take moments this time about C, if I take moments about C, I'll have eliminated this from our problem. Because in the moments, if I take moments about C, then the, the moments of C, the reaction at C about C will be zero. So I have to just worry about these two forces, but I have to think about now everything in terms of the distance from C. So I need to know the distance from here to here in terms of X, and the distance from here to there Okay, which that's not a big problem. That's, you know, six minus one, which is again, five meters. But this distance here, we've got to think about it a little bit. Well, I know that this from here to here is X. And I know from here to here is one. Okay, so you've got X minus one is going to be the distance that we need between where we're taking the moments and the force W. So the clockwise moments will be W times X minus one. W times X minus one. And that will be equal to the anti-clockwise moments, which is... Well, this one is zero, so that's not important. It'd be 1,500 times 5. 1,500 times 5. So we end up here with um, another equation, which will be basically uh, 7,500 7, equals W times X minus 1. That's equation 2. Now I have two equations with two unknowns that I can solve simultaneously. So I'm going to take it to the next page so I can com complete that. Okay, so here are the two equations and I have to solve them simultaneously. Now I could, I could expand the brackets here and have a, you know, solve it in the traditional way. You're going to have 5w minus 5x and x um, and, and minus w plus w um, plus uh, minus w and stuff. And you could try to solve it in, in that way, you know, get rid of the like terms um, or tr try to make one of the terms the same and then get rid of it by um, doing some sort of a substitution. But what I think would be easier here, which you can do, and will make life a lot easier for us, is, for example, if I take equation 2 and divide it by equation 1, you'll notice that the Ws will automatically be eliminated. Okay, because this is W times 5 minus it's W times X minus 1. If I divide them, I'll eliminate the W straight away. So I'll end up with 7,500 over 4,500 equals, and the W will cancel, so you basically I'll write it out so we can see, W times X minus 1 over W times 5 minus X. So what's happening here now is the Ws are cancelling out. So we're left with, uh, this. they cancel out 75 over 45, 5 goes into 75, 20, um, 5 goes into 75, sorry, not 20, 1 time, that's 10, 1 and we made it to 15. 15 times 5 is 75. 15 times 9, uh, sorry, f 5 times um, 9 is 45. So that's 15 over 5, which actually becomes something simpler. It's 5 over 3. You can say 25 goes into 75 5 times. 
and five goes 25 goes no, 15 goes into 25 five times and 15 goes into 45 three times sorry 75 over 45 is five over three 15 goes into them both and this will be x minus one over five minus x now we can solve this by doing cross multiplication so we're going to have five times five minus x equals three times x minus one so we've got 25 minus 5x equals 3x minus 3. So we have 25 plus 3, which is 28, equals 3x plus 5x, which is 8x. So we'll end up with 28 over 8 equals x. So x is going to be, 8 goes, well, that's like, um, divide 14 over 4. So x equals 4 goes into 14, 3 times remainder 2. So that's seven, it's like 7 over 2, so it's 3.5, basically. 3.5 meters is x. Okay, so we found the distance of x, which is the distance from A to the center of the mass. Okay, so x equals 3.5 meters. So there's the answer to that question. Now, very important for us to realize a couple of things. Um, one of them is that... When it says it's about to tilt about D, that means the other support is going to have a zero reaction. That's the key to answering this question. Otherwise, we'll have too many unknowns. Okay. The other thing that's really important is to express the distances in terms of the same value x. So we want to find from A to the center of mass. So I call that x. So I, just, I, I described all the distances here in terms of that x. So I, t I took moments about um, I took moments about d here in the first case, and then all the distances that I got from d, I, I expressed it in terms of that same x, which was from a to the center of mass. Okay, in both cases that way, my x in both equations refers to the same length, and my w in both equations refer refers to the same w. Then I can solve them simultaneously. They have to be the same thing. Okay, and there therefore we get the answer. So that's question four answered. Um, thank you for watching. Other questions about moments is you'll find from M1 in this um, playlist over here. Other questions from this paper of January 2021 M1 you will find in this playlist that will appear on this section. You can subscribe to my channel from here and on the top of the page you can find a card which will take you to another paper of M1 you might want to watch. Thank you for watching.